Big news, everybody. Big news. This just in. Delivery truck pulled away. And inside here. Oh, yep. That piece of paper probably wasn't important anyway. Yep, I've got enough three quarter round rod, tight tolerance, to make, oh, probably a couple levers for that live power clutch. I can make a lot of mistakes with this, still be in good shape. Let's get busy. All right, milling that flat went very well. Don't look at any of this stuff right here. I got busy doing other things while I was waiting on the UPS truck to bring the steel. But, yep, we've replicated the flat on the end. So, the next thing we need to do, well, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'm gonna prop this up on the things you shouldn't be looking at right now. Test fit, oh yeah. Excellent fit. All right, now that we know that is well and good, we need to put some bends in this. So we can take our production lever that will be the guide, and we go out in the cold so we can make it hot. I think I'm happy with that. Alright, we should be all cut to length, so compare it against the pattern. This is so much easier with two hands. <laughs> Come on. Uh, 
I thought I had this planned out too. All right, there we are, there we are. Ah. Ah. All right, we're just gonna give up now. <laughs> Look at that with two hands, it's so much easier. All right, yeah. I would say we're following the form just right. So that means we're done with the production lever. All right, it did its job. So we've got the shape established. We've got the flat put in and now we can go back to the prototype lever. So we need to put this hole right here into this one. I'm going to ignore this hole because it's like it was either abandoned from a prior setup or maybe it was a mistake. So I've been leaving the cover on here, it keeps the dust and stuff out of it from the furnace running, you know, kicks up a lot of stuff. So when this was positioned in the case, this, uh, this upper hole here that goes through the entire thickness of the shaft really didn't do anything. Um, there was a cutout in here, you can see it, but that was more for clearance of the shaft. And there was not a roll pin in that, there was just a roll pin down here in the lower one. So that's the only one I'm going to put into the new shaft because we just, we don't need to ventilate it any more than that, so. I've got it marked out on the new one center punched right there. Let's get it drilled. So that should finish out the new lever. And it is quite an improvement over that old mangled, torched, beat up, worn, <laughs> original. Stand down, soldier. Your tour is complete. So now we need to prep the case for installing the new one. So we've got the seal for it. That's the same 7443 seal that is used on the AmpliTorque lever. So. We can also take the end plug for it as well and get these two pieces loaded in. And finally, we can put the new lever in. Sending it home. Start the first floating fork. Plenty of grease all over everything. That's the way I like to do it. Second floating fork. Trouble is, this one wants to can't sideways and kind of bind it. So you gotta, you gotta keep them both. Kind of stood up straight. Yeah, that is, it's kind of fun dancing all that stuff in there. There. Oh, moves nice. All right, roll pin. I want to monitor and see how far it sticks out the bottom of the shaft. I don't want to go so far that it starts getting into the teeth of the bull gear. Not out the bottom yet. Okay, it's just starting out the bottom, but all we need to do is be below that surface there. So just a little bit further and that's all we got to do. Yeah, I like that. Yep, it's just enough it'll come up against the edge, but it won't hit the cover. And we're well, I can get my finger all the way between the gear and the bottom of the pin, so we're off of the bull gear. And to have a look at it, yeah, good positioning right there. And 
it's just the way it's supposed to be. So with the clutch disengaged, it's canted back. With it engaged, it's canted slightly forward. So that helps it to remain in position, especially in the disengaged position. At least it's got gravity kind of keeping it there. It's better than having it, you know, straight up and down or even a little bit forward and constantly wanting to just creep pressure in on those clutch discs. So, all right, we can start work on the top cover now, finally. Our gasket is made in place. We can set the cover on top. I'm not going to anchor this permanently because there's a couple more reasons I have to go back into this rear compartment. One of them is uh, fitting the brakes, just making sure that my top bolts don't go into bull gears. And the other one is going to be fitting that hydraulic pump to the back. I'm gonna need some access in there, but we've got seven. Right, correct, and proper. Rockford head bolts. Good old originals because, well, we're not animals. <laughs> I have a thing with bolts. They have to be the right bolts. What can I say? And about the only thing left to talk about with the top cover are the missing bolts there and there. I mentioned how the bolt layout and spacing was the same on this one as the production cover, and it is. But the case back here does not have a threaded hole right there or right there, although the prototype cover has those provisions for those two bolts, which would be a, uh, a trimmed down, very short headed bolt there and there because again, the three point lift assembly attaches right here. We're gonna leave these three quarter thread holes open for now because there's special studs that have to go in and certain links have to be in certain places. So we'll address all that when we set that three point lift on top. But aside from that, top cover is on. So now we can look at all those pedals on the bench that I told you you shouldn't look at before. We've got permission to do so now. So I decided while I was waiting on brake discs to show up, I still didn't really feel like getting into the hydraulic pump. Although I've got bearings and a seal on order, supposed to be here in a couple of days so we will be starting on that pump very soon but I decided it would be easier to round out the brake disc install if I had the pedals and the pivot shaft and everything done up as well so we've got prototype pedals production pedals and quick rundown of the numbers we have a 10x 5090 and a 10x 5091 compare that with uh, this is a 10a 7448 and a 10A7449. The only other 10X piece here is this, um, this pull bracket. And this is kind of neat because it's a 10X510 and then they ground the last digit off and they hand stamped a four. I'm sure there's a story behind that, but uh, we don't know what it is. No number on the shaft, but we do have a, um, a key difference. You can see these woodruff keys and key slots, two of them on the prototype shaft, all right? That is how they anchored the um, the pull bracket and the other pedal to it. Whereas the production versions, you guessed it, roll pins. They just loved roll pins. No woodruff keys in this at all. So not much of a surprise there. I also cleaned up the pull rods for the actuator assembly. So you can see they uh, they go in these, uh, these tapered, or recessed dome pockets right there. And it's just a couple of um, 3 8 fine thread, very long Rockford head bolts. We have a couple of uh, dome top spacers on them, a couple of jam nuts, and they will thread into the clevises just like that. So that stuff luckily was in pretty good condition. So it all cleaned up rather well. Now just compare and contrast, look at the size difference in the pedals, okay? So these are two matching like pedals, all right, and they're about the same down there, but then you can see there's quite a length difference. 
Look at the difference in the width of the pedal. The production is much, much narrower. The prototype's really nice and wide. Otherwise, construction's pretty much the same. Another key difference is, look at the notches for the brake lock on the production. And we will compare that to how many notches they put on the prototype unit. Get these side by side once again. So, it's not that they thought they were gonna need this many because if you were gonna utilize that many notches for that swing down brake lock, this prototype pedal would have had like a, a swing to it. Unbelievable, okay? What this was, I believe, was more of a measuring stick for them because when they were getting these cast and, and fabbing them up, how they were gonna do the foot panels and the brake lock levers was totally up in the air. So this just gives them tons of options and you can see we have lots lots of serrations lots of uh, notches on the other pedal as well and that doesn't mean that they actually use them you can see about the only one with wear is right up here you know but uh, by the time they had everything finalized for production they they pretty much had their range figured out so they didn't need a stretch you know that long but pretty much same story with the other pedal as well we set that up next to the prototype version, line the back ends up. Yeah, we've got about a five, six inch offset right there. And again, quite a difference in the pedal width. So interesting differences. I'll do a quick run through of how this goes together real quick. I pounded the first woodruff key in place and we start with what I call the 10X51. Okay, it's a four bracket. So, Get this so I'm looking at it correctly, all right. Should go like that. So start that on the end. These are all kind of close fits. So sometimes they slide easy, sometimes they don't. All right, line that in with the key. We have cotter pen has to go in that end to stop it and then up against the pen, all right. So for the other end, we take the other woodruff key and I admittedly filed on this one just a little bit so that I don't have to pound it in and pound it back out again because we're at mock-up stage only with this, all right? And that's another thing. We're not pre-greasing any of the pivots because all this is gonna come back off for the primer coat anyhow. So if we were in final assembly, everything critical would be getting a coat of grease. But the next pedal with the corresponding key slot goes on now. So just line that in and start the key. All right, it's about as far on as that one's going to go. We're getting a little far away here, but uh, then the second one is just um, free floating. It just pivots on there. So we can start it on outside of the keyed piece. So Spin this around so y'all can get a better view of what's going on with this end. We finish it up with a flat washer and then another heavy cotter pin holds it all together on that end. So we have this inner pedal attaches to that pull bracket and this outer pedal just pivots on the shaft and pulls on its own clevis so that's how those are going to work and to put it all in we start with the shaft that just has the 10x51 okay it's a four bracket on start right through and these bores have grease zerks with a passage that goes all the way inside i put two new uh, grease zerks in you can see that one over there i like new zerks and everything because the old ones just uh, they just don't work very well over to the other side now, rotate the shaft up, throw that intentionally loose fitting key in. You can see now why I like to do that for procedures such as this. It makes it so much easier just to knock things together quick, get them back apart. Put the keyed pedal on. Let's see if we can line it in. There we go. And we can take the pivoting pedal, throw 
throw that in place. All right, washer, and just drop the cutter pin in just to hold it. Boy, that was a happy accident having that bracket hold these pedals up just so. Nice. Well, if having pedals and having levers means progress, we've made some progress. We've got more of each than we've had on this tractor since we took it apart all those years ago. Just to check, I'm gonna take this pull rod, line it in, make sure, yeah, we point toward that break opening just fine. Check the other side as well. No reason to believe anything would be out of alignment, but just to make sure, yeah, that's gonna be excellent. So throw this over here with the rest of these pieces. Brake discs are due in tomorrow. I would have liked to have had them today so that I could get those pressure plates and discs and covers and everything on as long as we had the brake pedals and we're this close, but to keep the feed popping, I need to upload tonight. So we'll just pick up with that next time. Thank you for watching everyone. Little by little, the parts are trickling in. Hydraulic pump comes up next. We may be taking that apart next time as well. Thank you for watching everyone. Hope to see y'all back again.